You must have heard the saying, hard work always pays off at one point in your life. This simple phrase greatly impacted a person who dreamed of reaching the heights of success. Now you might be wondering why we are suddenly talking about individuals who strive to rise from the bottom and eventually reach the top. Because they wish they could be at a place where the whole world could witness their accomplishments. Hold on, we will fish out this truth soon. So sit tight and get ready because the star of this video is none other than Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. Most of us still associate the success of Apple with Steve Jobs. Somehow it makes sense because he was the visionary who gave exceptional ideas about iconic products. However, it seems that the world should also know the contributions Tim made to the success of this largest tech company. Are you curious to know how a simple management staff member became today CEO of Apple? Then let's explore what hidden skills Tim Cook had up his sleeves that made him the second highest paid employee globally. So hop on this time machine and let's take a look back at the humble beginnings of Tim Cook. The current CEO of Apple came into this world on November 1st, 1960 in Mobile, Alabama. Like any other mediocre family, Tim seems to have a nice childhood with his two brothers, Michael and Gerald. Furthermore, his father was an ordinary worker in a shipyard while his mother worked at a pharmacy. Since his childhood, Tim has shown exceptional growth in his studies. It was like in a crowd of ordinary people, he was extraordinary and prepared to conquer the world. Young Tim studied at Robertsdale High School, where he was treated like a star because of his intelligence. After graduation, he enrolled in a local state college, Auburn University. You will be astonished to know that young Tim had a keen interest in computers. He wanted to work in a computer company, but that doesn't mean his main aim was to become a programmer. Instead, he was interested in exploring the operational side of big companies, so he became an industrial engineer. Did you know that Tim Cook got his first job at IBM? It was a part-time job at first, where he mainly worked on their supply chain. While doing this job, he completed his MBA degree from Duke University. This accomplishment paved the way for the incorporation industry, and he became the fulfillment director at IBM shortly. Despite this great position, Tim decided to leave IBM after giving 12 years of his life to this company. Later in 1994, he was selected as the COO of a computer company called Intelligent Electronics. Again, he left this small company after working for three years. It seems he had a big picture of life on his mind from the beginning. He kept climbing this ladder of his career and started his job as a vice president in Compaq Computer Corporation. At the same time, Apple was not at its peak like it is today. Can you believe that the company's condition was so bad that people presumed that it was going to go bankrupt? It sounds surprising, but it happened when Steve Jobs was away from Apple for over 10 years. However, a miracle happened and Apple made a stunning move to bring Steve Jobs back into the company. They agreed to purchase the next software in a $400 million deal. And that's how the visionary became a temporary CEO of Apple. Eventually, people realized that Steve was the only hope who could save this drowning ship. While reviving his company, Steve assembled a new executive team where one of the members he invited to work was Tim Cook. At first, Tim was only interested in meeting Steve Jobs because he admired him for his creative ideas. Later on, when Tim listened to Steve's vision for raising the company, he decided to give his best to turn his vision into a reality. Initially, Tim's friends and family were against his decision to join Apple. They thought it was crazy to give up the role of vice president for a company that is going to go extinct soon. Well, it's not like Tim didn't understand their point, but he was not ready to lose the opportunity of working with his idol. So following his gut feeling, he joined Apple in 1998. We all know Apple is famous for its robust UI and compelling products. Unfortunately, Tim had no experience in this regard. So he put his efforts into the supply chain and oversaw the worldwide operations as a senior vice president. To reduce the complexity of supply chains, he decreased the number of Apple vendors from 100 to 24. Then he got rid of half of the warehouses of Apple and started to make links with contract manufacturers. In his opinion, hiring a third company will raise the economic sales of the company to a great extent. 
other than that, Tim's great move was implementing Apple's just-in-time manufacturing instead of inventory management. The senior vice president didn't like inventory, as he said inventory is like a dairy product and nobody wants spoiled milk. It's not like the product will be available in stores, but it will be given to the customers when he demands a specific product within seconds. Though it seems unrealistic, Tim leveraged just in time by eliminating inventory for several weeks. You might assume that it's not a big deal, but managing and storing several products can be quite expensive while running a small business. To make it easy, let's suppose that Apple stores inventory worth five weeks. They have to bear the expenses of about $5 billion for inventory. On the other hand, if the company stores iPhones for five days, they only have to spend $685 million on inventory. Wow, now that's a lot of cash for that sinking company. Now we can say Tim decided to cut costs at the right time. Due to contract and just-in-time manufacturing, the company's costs started to reduce. The popular products of early 2000, the iMac and the iPod, did wonders in the market, and the company gained lots of profit from its sales. This revenue encouraged Steve to work on a new product, iPhone, which became a massive success in the future. Sadly, happy days don't stay long for Steve, and was soon diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. His condition went so bad that he needed a liver transplant. Some sources said Tim even offered Steve Jobs his liver, but his boss refused to accept the offer. After some time, Steve's declining health didn't allow him to work efficiently, and he started to assign essential tasks to Tim Cook. Eventually, he became temporary CEO of Apple in 2009. Steve Jobs planned to come back to Apple in the same year, but he had to take a medical leave. Then in August 2011, he resigned from his position, and at last, the day came when Tim became the CEO of the largest tech company. Undoubtedly, Tim's share of bad days had ended as he enjoyed the early years of his leadership in the company. At that time, people were crazy about the new features of the iPhone, and its sales were at its peak. However, humans are always attracted to new things, and just like that, their interest in the iPhone started to vanish. Don't worry, that's the time when Tim got a chance to show the world his hidden skills. How would you react to the fact that he was the one who made Apple a lifestyle company? Well, it's common knowledge that an ordinary man can't afford Apple products in their daily life. Moreover, the company was also criticized for making overpriced products. Despite all that, people need to consider that the entry-level iPhone is cheaper than the original product. In our opinion, Tim played a great game by focusing on the new versions of the iPhone that made the company's products desirable worldwide. Being a crafty genius, he balanced the brand image and demanded products well in the market. Besides, getting services like Apple Music, iCloud, and Apple TV has been the crown jewels of the company's revenue. You might have a hard time swallowing that Apple's revenue rises $35 billion per year from them alone. Aside from revenue, these services enhanced Apple's ecosystem, making customers unable to use any other phone. Ultimately, these three factors remain Tim's legacy in the company. Not to forget, the company rose 10 times under his supervision. Despite being the second highest paid employee globally, Tim still strives to introduce new products like Apple Glasses and Apple Cars. Now, do you think this genius will remain the CEO until the launch of these products? Or is someone else ready to take the place of Apple's CEO? I guess only time will tell.